Good morning, members of the media, and welcome to Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Weekly Media Brief. My name is Michael Jackman, Acting Assistant Superintendent, Corporate Communications Unit, and Public Information Officer for the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Today I have with me Inspector Sean Sukram of the Court and Process Branch, Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, and he'll be making a statement on police powers of arrest. Inspector Sukram. Morning. I was asked to treat with the issue of male police officers arresting female persons in the absence of a female police officer, the issue of obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty and resisting arrest. So I wish to begin by indicating that police officers get their powers of arrest from three principal pieces of legislation. And these are the Police Service Act, the Summary Courts Act, and the Criminal Law Act. So to treat with the issue, we must look at these provisions. And under Section 45B of the Police Service Act, Chapter 1501, it states that a police officer may arrest, charge, and bring before a summary court, a person found committing any offense. Section 46.1b of the said act also states, a police officer may arrest without a warrant a person who commits a breach of the peace in his presence. Under the Summary Courts Act, Section 104 speaks to any person may arrest without a warrant a person who commits a breach of the peace in his presence. And under the Criminal Law, Criminal Law Act, sec, sub, Section 3, Subsection 2 and 3 speaks that any person may arrest without a warrant anyone. And Section 4 and 5 speaks, and no, it is worthy to know that in Section 2 and 3, when we speak of any person in this instance, and in this instance only, it includes a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. So any citizen, including a police officer, may arrest. Section 4 and 5 is specific to police officers who may arrest without a warrant anyone. So when we look at these pieces of legislation, one finds that no distinction is made between a male police officer and a female police officer arresting anyone, nor is there any distinction made about a male offender or a female offender. The legislation is clear. It speaks to, in the most instance, a police officer and anyone as opposed to the offender. So to answer the question more specifically, according to what is stated in the legislation, nothing prevents a male police officer from arresting a female person in the absence of a female police officer. On the issue of obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty, this offense is catered for under Section 59 of the Police Service Act, Chapter 1501. However, the Act does not define what exactly is obstructing. So as a result, we, the police, have to rely on case law to assist us or to lead us in, with our decision. There is a noted case of Henchcliffe and Sheldon, an English case, in which Lord Goddard, the Chief Justice at the time, he set out a test with regards to obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty. And that test suggests that obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty means making it more difficult for a police officer to do his job. Simply that, making it more difficult for a police officer to do his job. This test was also adopted in a local case in the by our Court of Appeal, a matter of Wayland Jennings and Corporal Reed, the Magisterial Appeal number 70 of 2016. 
In that case, mere words used were sufficient to amount to obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duties. In that case, the appellant who was arrested and charged, he simply stepped between the police officer, Corporal Reed, and two persons whom Corporal Reed were attempting to arrest. And he made a statement. Know what you're about, you know. One phone call from me. My aunt is a superintendent. My brother is a police. I could deal with you. Those were his words. And those words were found by the court to be sufficient to satisfy the offense of obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty. With regard to resisting arrest, again, the act does not define what exactly is resisting. However, when one looks at the, the literal meaning from the Oxford Dictionary, it is defined as, resist is defined as follows. To stop, hinder the progress or course of, strive against, oppose, refuse to yield, or refuse to comply. So resisting arrest includes any deliberate act by the person being arrested to stop, to obstruct, to prevent, to hinder his or her lawful arrest. And it includes any other course of action which may make it difficult for the arresting officer to effect the arrest that he has embarked upon. Subsequent to that, the other issue I have is courses of recourse. So if someone who is arrested by the police officer is of the opinion that he's being wrongly arrested, he's being maliciously prosecuted, he was abused, or wronged in any way, once that person feels that he has been wronged by the police, he has options. He has options that he can follow. And if one of the first course of action, you can make a report against any police officer at any police station. There, there is a mechanism in place where you can go to a station, you make a report, the report is taken and sent to the disciplinary officer for investigation. Following that, there is the option of the Professional Standard Bureau where you can go to them and make your report of whatever wrong that you perceive. There's also the Police Complaint Authority and ultimately there's the issue of taking action against the state because as police officers we are all agents of the state and we act on behalf of the state. So in that instance, you can sue the state and all these are the options for persons who may feel that they have been wronged by the police when arrested. And that is 